This is the Indian Scout Rogue, a extremely cool cruiser motorcycle. And I must say a big thank you to More Speed Racing for lending me this bike for a couple of weeks. They delivered it down from their dealership, which was about a four hour drive. So massive thanks to them. And they've also delivered me a highly customized Scout with a 240 back wheel, which looks immense, um, and a suicide shifter. So stay tuned for that video and let's get into this one. When this bike was dropped off, I was taken aback by how good looking it is. It's a really mean looking machine. It's heavily blacked out. There's barely any chrome on this bike. And the custom one that came along with it was out of this world. So you don't want to miss that one. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. One of the first things I noticed was how light this bike feels for a cruiser. Now it's not a light motorcycle, but as cruisers go, it did feel really light and especially the front end. So when I pushed it out of my garage, which has a slight slope up to the driveway, um, it felt very easy and a lot easier than my Harley does. Um, and if you want to see a comparison video between this and my Harley Davidson Softail Standard, then let me know in the comments below because they are similar-ish bikes and very similarly price. So if you're in the market for one of those, this could be an alternative. When you start the bike up, thanks to this Jekyll and Hyde exhaust system, you can start it up with the valves closed and you'll get a very subtle, subdued, almost stock sound. So it pretty much sounds like the stock standard bike. And that's great if you're uh, setting off early in the morning for work, or if you live in the countryside and you happen to go past a lot of horses, you can press the button, close the valves, and you're not gonna scare them when you go past, which is fantastic. When you press the button to open it up, however, you get a completely different animal. This thing sounds incredible, and it's the way the devil intended it to sound. The V-Twin is really opened up and it's a very good sounding bike. It's got a lot of character to it um, and some nice pops and burbles. And this engine is very different characteristically to a lot of other V-Twins that I've ridden and other cruisers. It's very different to a Harley Davidson Milwaukee 8. It's got less torque and the torque comes in higher in the RPM range. So I'll go into the figures in a moment. But saying that, around town at low RPMs, it's very comfortable and it doesn't fuss whatsoever. And because the bike feels quite light, um, it's very easy to manoeuvre in car parks, in the garage, etc. Now, when you get out into the open road and you open this thing up, it is unbelievable. It's a very sporty feeling cruiser and it does like to be revved and it sort of comes to life above around four and a half thousand RPM, and then it really goes. So it's got plenty of stick. So if you're looking for a sporty cruiser, uh, this is one hell of a bike. So the engine is a liquid cooled 60 degree V-twin, and it's 1,133 cc to be precise. And not only is it a fantastic looking engine, it is a work of art. It's a little bit more um, modern feeling compared to some of the Harley engines, but it maintains that really cool, blacked out, menacing look. I really love the look of it. Um, the peak torque comes in at 5,600 RPM, which is 97 Newton meters. And on Indian's website, I can't seem to find uh, much information about the power. It says 95 horsepower, and it doesn't specify what RPM range that comes in at. Um, and if you look at some other websites, they quote that this bike produces 100 horsepower at about 8,100 RPM. So if we go off that and uh, believe that it's true, then that is quite high up in the RPM range. The cool factor is through the roof with this bike. Everything about it is cool. The blacked out looks, the menacing 19 inch front wheel, which looks fantastic. The fairing on the front here, which is not only good looking, but very functional as well. It does scoop the air over your head quite nicely. And I didn't find any buffeting issues with that at all. 
and the back end looks very nice and tidy. It's a very sleek machine and it's been designed very, very well. It's really good looking and I think the best looking bike of the Scout range. And at £13,995 starting price in the UK, it's a lot of bike for the money and you wouldn't be disappointed. I know I wouldn't. So comparing that to the new Harley Davidsons of today it is a lot less and you get a hell of a lot of bike for the money. Scout Rogue handles really nicely in the bends and it's a bit more of a sporty feeling cruiser compared to a lot of its competitors. It feels very light and it's only 250 kilograms with all the liquids in there so a pretty light bike for a cruiser um, especially for one of this ilk and it really does like to be thrown into the corners and you can have a lot of fun on the back roads with this bike. I did find at times that it could feel a little bit twitchy as the front end is very light. So nothing to worry about, but uh, it, it is a very swift moving bike and it changes direction very sharply for a bike of this type. It's very comfortable and I would be comfortable doing a ride to the old man down in Wales on this bike. I'd probably have to stop two or three times to rest the bum, but the seat is a little bit more comfortable than some of its competitors. The brakes are perfectly adequate. They aren't the best stopping brakes in the world. You've got single disc on the front and a single on the rear, but they are very good and plenty enough for this kind of bike. The suspension is on the firmer side, which again helps with the handling. Um, it can be adjusted slightly, um, but this rear end is a little bit firm and you can get uh, aftermarket options or there is an Indian option with the piggyback shocks. So if you do find it's too firm, there are options out there to change it. I'm six foot one and this is what I look like on the bike. So it's a very comfortable riding position with forward controls, but they're not majorly far forward. So they're just in the right place to be honest. And if they were a little bit further back, I think it would feel a little bit cramped for someone of my height. But it's perfectly comfortable and if you are shorter you should be fine on this bike because it's very low down you can flat foot it very easily as a, as a shorter rider you've got these mini eight bars which are really cool looking and they put your arms in the perfect position just in line with your shoulders and a nice width so really comfortable and you're going to look cool while you're on it as well you've got an analog dial which is very minimal and very good looking I really like this and you've got a little digital display in there which tells you what you need to know apart from a fuel gauge which uh, is not on this bike. It's got a warning light but no fuel gauge. It's up to you whether that's essential for you. You've got uh, a locking fuel cap which is great and the mirrors are underbar mirrors. Um, I found that they're pretty good but uh, sometimes you forget where you're looking and sometimes your sleeve or your glove or something can get in the way of it but uh, you can see most of the road behind you. Everything feels pretty good quality on this bike. There's nothing on it where I think uh, that could do with upgrading quality. It's all good quality parts. The mud guard is slightly short on the front and I think, I know we keep banging on about it because it does mean that you can get mud over the uh, radiator um, and it just means more cleaning. But I do think this bike would suit a big mud guard, um, like a really one that goes all the way around the wheel. I think that would look really cool on this bike. Uh, but it's up to you, you can do that aftermarket and change it. Um, and more speed racing do a lot of fabrication work themselves and they are really, really good at customising bikes. So if you want to do some custom work to a bike, then definitely give them a shout. And if you're looking at buying one of these or another type of bike, they've got lots of different things in there, then definitely give them a shout, they are fantastic. You've got six gears on this bike. The gearbox 
is smoother than the Harley Davidson gearbox. You don't get that uh, clunk into first gear, um, but it's still got a nice positive and satisfying feel throughout the gears. So I'm very happy with that. And the side stand is definitely better than the Harley side stand. It's, you know that it's in place. Um, so I'm very pleased with that. Much like the Harleys, it has got a belt drive, which means a lot less maintenance than a chain. So I really like these belt drives um, and it's, yeah, it's a fantastic bit of kit. Um, and overall, I'm very impressed with this bike, actually. It is a really good bit of kit. It's really cool. It sounds great. And if you've got something that goes as well as uh, cruising around town and looking cool, then this could be a very good option. And bikes like the Sportster S have barely any character. That engine is very clinical um, and it's a very fast, good performing bike, but the sound is not there. It just isn't there. Whereas this bike has the power, not as much as the Sportster S, but as, as much as you would ever need in the real world. And it has the sound to go along with it. So what a fantastic bike and we'll see you in the next video.